أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to my Ramadan series Understanding Quran with Nafisa. We are looking at Surah An Nisa, and so in today's video, we're going to begin from verse 74. I really hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. Please continue to give it a thumbs up, continue to like, continue to comment, and continue to share this video with your brothers and sisters in the deen so that we can spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, so verse 74, Audhu Billahi Minash. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Let those who sacrifice this life for the hereafter fight in the cause of Allah. And whoever fights in Allah's cause, whether they achieve martyrdom or victory, we shall honor them with a great reward. And what is it with you? You do not fight in the cause of Allah and for the oppressed men, women and children who cry out, our Lord, deliver us from the lands of the oppressors and appoint for us a saviour, appoint for us a helper, all by your grace. Believers fight in the cause of Allah wherever disbelievers fight for the cause of the devil. So fight against shaitan's evil forces. Indeed, shaitan's schemes are ever weak. Have you, O prophet, not seen those who had been told, do not fight, rather establish prayer and pay alms tax. Then once the order came to fight, a group of them feared those hostile people as Allah should be feared even more. They said, our Lord, why have you ordered us to fight? If only you had delayed the order for us for a little while. Say, O Prophet wasallam, the enjoyment of this world is so little, whereas the hereafter is far better for those mindful of Allah. And none of you will be wronged even by the width of a thread of a date stone. Wherever you may be, death will overcome you, even if you are in fortified towers. When something good befalls them, they say, this is from Allah. But when something evil befalls them, they say, this is from you. Say, O Prophet, both have been destined by Allah. So whatever is the matter with these people, they can hardly comprehend anything. Whatever good befalls you is from Allah, and whatever evil befalls you is from yourself. We have sent you, O Prophet, وسلم, as a messenger to all people, and Allah is sufficient as a witness. So we're going to stop there and go right back up to verse 74. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let those who sacrifice this life for the hereafter fight in the cause of Allah. Are referring to the battles that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to fight and the believers at that time, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those who decided they were not going to go sacrifice themselves for the sake of Allah and that they would rather stay home. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to speak to them and thus pass the message on to us about the importance of making sacrifices for the sake of Allah. So Allah says in verse 74, let those who would sacrifice this life for the hereafter fight in the cause of Allah. And oftentimes when we think about these verses, it's very easy to just assume that it's only talking about this physical fight and this physical incident that the Prophet ﷺ and the believers found themselves in. But rather, when we think about our internal fight, the fighting that we do within ourselves in trying to fight the temptation of shaitan, in trying to stay upon Allah's path, that is a far greater fight for us to do because oftentimes that's the type of fighting that we fail in. The fighting against our own nafs and against our own selves in terms of staying away from the evil deeds and following the right path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for us. For some of us, the difficulty and challenge is in doing the acts of good deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has advised us to do so that we can attain the hereafter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, whoever fights in Allah's cause, whether they achieve martyrdom or victory, Allah will do what for them? This is the reward of either fighting yourself or standing up for Islam. The reward is that Allah will honor them with a great reward. 
whether you succeed in this life or you're unsuccessful in this life, whether you win whatever it is you're, you're protesting for, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, whether you win it in this life or not, whether you sacrifice your own physical self or not, in the end, if you do it purely for the sake of Allah, Allah will honor you and elevate you and grant you a great reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then moves on to say in verse 75 that, and what is it with you? You do not fight in the cause of Allah and for oppressed men and women who cry out to Allah. So when our brothers and sisters are in need for whatever the cause may be, it doesn't matter where they are from. It doesn't matter if they are from the Arab land or if they are from the African land or if they are from Asia or if they are from the West. It does not matter when our brothers and sisters cry out for help. We are to, as Muslims, stand up and help our brothers and sisters in Islam. And again, remembering and referring back to some of my previous um, sessions that I've spoken of sincerity in helping and some of our help does not need to be announced to people for people to know if we feel like we can make a great difference in one way or another where to do the best that we can to help our brothers and sisters in islam who call out for help who cry out for help because because there are laws to how things work in this world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to leave his arsh he's not going to leave his throne and come down to earth to help these people he's going to use the believers the believers who want to please allah through them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help and so it would have to be us that do do the charities that needs to be done, right? So we give the money, we spend out of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. If our presence is needed, we give you we do that, right? As believers, it should be part of a believer's um responsibility to another believer to help another believer when the need is necessary. So Allah says, when the your brothers and sisters call out for help, that you should respond, right? And Allah tells us of the du'as that the oppressed make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling out for his help. Then in verse 76, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, believers do what? They fight in the cause of Allah, whereas disbelievers fight in the cause of the devil. Subhanallah. Meaning that believers support that which is good. We support what is good and we do not support that which is evil. So it is therefore our responsibility to try to identify what is the good and what is the evil so that we know what to support, right? Um, and I know these days it can be quite hard, quite tricky, especially for those of us who live in the West, because we are bound by certain laws of our lands um, to follow certain things, or we may be restricted in what we can do. But at the bare minimum, we should be able to make dua for those who are suffering and for those who are struggling. And we should not minimize our du'as only for those that we know of who are suffering because there are so many around the world that we do not know of who are also going through oppression and suffering so although it's okay to specifically mention specific people that asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them relief is also important for us to also add and say ya Allah and also any of the brothers and sisters around the world who may be going through challenges and difficulty ya Allah you know, grant them relief and, and grant them safety and grant them provision and whatever it is that they're looking for, Allah help all of them so that we're not trying to discriminate or be racist or anything like that as it regards to our calling for help for our brothers and sisters in Islam. As long as they are Muslims and they are in need, our job, if we can do it in whatever capacity we're able to do it, is for us to respond in a way that will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the hope. He says, indeed, shaitan's schemes are ever weak. His schemes are weak. Subhanallah. This verse really stands out to me because oftentimes we like to think, oh my God, shaitan is so powerful. Shaitan is so strong. Shaitan is so powerful. Like we say it all the times when we're not able to overcome a difficulty and we're like, oh my God, shaitan has overcome me. It's so hard for me to follow Allah's path. Allah says that shaitan is weak. He is. Because compared to what Allah can do, who is shaitan? He's nothing. He's just another creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah says his schemes are weak. That is not to say that we should just ignore it and pretend that his schemes are not there. No, we are to make sure that we're identifying his schemes 
and we are fighting the good fight, right? The internal fight for most of us, right? Not like going to battle with anyone physically, but just fighting the internal fight, trying your best to stay away from the evil deeds and trying your best to continue doing the good deeds. Because sometimes what shaitan will do if he cannot get you to do evil deeds is that he will distract you away from doing your good deeds instead. So you'll just find yourself doing stuff that neither benefits you nor harms you. Like, so in Ramadan, this might look like instead of you having time to sit down, read Quran, instead of you having time to donate money and do some act of good deed or helping someone else, what the shaitan might just do is he might just whisper in your ears, you know what, how about you just kind of chill? You're a bit tired, just sleep. So you end up sleeping your whole way through the day of Ramadan, doing no good deed. Now sleep, yes, it has its benefits. It's not particularly haram, but it's not the best thing you could be doing with your time if you've already had enough sleep during the night, right? So that is one of the ways that shaitan can steal away from us the goodness that we could be doing. And he prevents us by from doing that. And he can influence us so that we don't earn more, so that we don't, we don't, you know, rise up in our ranking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it's very important that we identify the schemes of shaitan, but Allah does say his schemes are ever weak. Verse 77, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go, goes on, goes on to say that, have you, O Prophet, not seen those who had been told, do not fight, rather establish prayer and pay, pay um, zakah, basically. Then once the order came to fight, a group of them feared those hostile people as Allah should be feared. And this is something that we all should be asking ourselves. Are we fearing those who go against the laws of Allah in the same way that we should be fearing Allah? Because sometimes we say, no, no, we don't, we don't. We, we follow Allah and we fear Allah the most. But when it comes down to actually following the orders of Allah, this is where we really show whether or not we truly fear Allah. Because when it really comes down to it, some of us are doing the things that's benefiting those who are against Allah and against his faith and against his deen. And we would rather do that rather than follow the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we do not want to be amongst these people. We want to be among the people whom when we hear Allah's guidance, when we hear Allah's, Allah's laws and his rules, we are open we are absolutely open and ready and we have a sincere heart to want to receive it. We have a sincere heart to want to receive it. So Allah said that they said, our Lord, why have you ordered us to fight? If only you had delayed the order for us for a little while. Say, O oh Prophet, the enjoyment of this world is so little. Meaning the people who are refusing again to go and stand up for Islam to help the Muslims so that they can win this, so that Islam can prevail. Those who don't want to go to stand up for the, for the truth and to stand up for Allah, why is that? Because they, they are afraid of losing their own lives. They're afraid of losing some kind of a benefit in this dunya. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and reminds us that the enjoyment of this world is so little, whereas the hereafter is far better for those who are mindful of Allah. It's so interesting, the condition is that you, you may only see the benefit in making a sacrifice for the sake of Allah if you are mindful of Allah. Those who are not mindful of Allah don't see the point in making any sacrifices for Allah. Ramadan in and of itself is a sacrifice. Us fasting is a sacrifice. Staying away from sin is a sacrifice. Doing more good deeds is a sacrifice. Not getting in as much sleep because you're praying taraweeh and waking up early is a sacrifice. Ramadan is the month of sacrifices, right? And so those who see the point in that are those who do what? Are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to be able to enjoy and feel the joy of you actually following Allah's laws, you have to become more mindful of Allah. And by listening to lectures like this, and by watching videos like this, by doing more acts of good deeds, you become closer to Allah, and you become more and more mindful of Allah, because you know what it is that he's asking of you. This is one of the reasons why some people really struggle with um, following Allah's path. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is just kind of like, what's the point? They don't, they don't see the point. And for someone else, they might hear it and say, well, how can you say what's the point? Because they, they are not people who are mindful of Allah. They don't see the point. 
And so Allah goes on to say that, and none of you will be wronged even by the width of the thread of a date stone. Meaning not, you will not be wronged in any way at all by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden himself from oppressing his creation? Allah has forbidden himself from oppressing his creation. He's the creator. He can make whatever laws he like. He can do whatever he wants to do to anybody because he owns us, right? But he forbids oppression against himself towards his, his um, creation. And so that is why Allah expects the same from us, that we do not oppress one another. He owns us, yet he doesn't oppress us, even though he can. So what right do we have to oppress one another? And so verse 78, Allah goes on to say, whenever you may, wherever you may be. And so, and so verse 78, Allah goes on to say, wherever you may be, what you're fearing is going to come to you. What these people are fearing by refusing to stand up for Allah and refusing to go out and stand up for the deen by fighting in these battles is that they are afraid that they will lose their life. But Allah says, what you're afraid of is going to come to you no matter where you are or what you do. If it is destined that your time is coming, you are going to go. Whether you're sat at home or whether you're out somewhere or whether you're in a car, whether you're on the plane, when your time has been decreed for you, the angel of death will certainly find you, period. So Allah says, wherever you may be, death will overcome you. Even if you were in, a forti in fortified towers, you can barricade yourself, do an iron wall, do whatever you want. The angel of death will appear when the time is time. So this is from Allah. We continue. When something good befalls them, they say this is from Allah. But when something evil befalls them, they say this is from you. This is from you. Like it's your fault that something bad is happening to us. They blame others. For when something has gone wrong, but when goodness comes, right, and befalls them, they say that is from God. What they don't understand is that, say, O Prophet Wasallam, both good and what we perceive to be the bad of the challenges and of the trials of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both of them are what? From Allah. So what is the matter with these people? They can hardly comprehend anything. Why can they not see that Allah decrees goodness for us, i.e. the things that make us happy, but he also decrees challenges for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you think that you will be able to say that you believe and that you will not be tested? Indeed, Allah tested those who came before us until they said, when would the help of Allah come? And Allah says, indeed, my help is near. So we don't get to have a pass just because we say we believe in Allah. If you say it, Allah's going to need you to show it. You, you're going to need to prove to Allah that when you say your shahada, you actually mean it. And this is where Allah differentiates those who are liars from those who are actually telling the truth. It's by the actions. When I make relationship style content and I say to you guys, when people show you who they are, believe them. <laughs> I don't say when they tell you who they are. I say when they show you who they are, believe them. Meaning you need to look at the actions. It's the same thing that Allah is looking from us. He wants to see the actions. Yep, it's good that you've pronounced it. Now let me see. Here are my laws. Are you happy to follow it? These days we have people who call themselves spiritual, but they're not religious. To me, the only difference I see between those is, yeah, they cannot deny the fact that there is a higher power, but they don't want to be told how to live their lives what to do. They don't want to be given no boundaries. They want to be the ones to live a life according to their desires. Their desires is their God. Their desires is their religion. They will do whatever they like. But yes, we can't, we can't ignore the fact that there, there is a higher power who's in control here. But we don't, we don't want to do anything. We don't want to follow anything because religion has laws. Religion has rules. Religion has boundaries. But if you want to achieve success in this world and the next, you have to be able to follow the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our ability. Now, none of us can be perfect, brothers and sisters. So let's, let's, not, so let's not expect from ourselves that we, we're going to be perfect. But it's just an ongoing journey of continuously trying.
That's all it is. And if you can do that, even if you make mistakes along the way, Allah will be more than happy to welcome you back when you have a change of heart and you decide, I want to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let that be a motivation for both myself and yourself to say, in whatever ways we may have wronged Allah, we can come back. Allah is more than happy to receive us. So let's return back to our Lord.